dog. You are looking nice today. Look at you, looking nice. Looking nice. Yeah. She has been in lots of live streams lately. She is the star of the show. That's a way to start a video. <laughs> hey you guys, it's MJ and welcome back to Pet Adventures again. So as you can see, I have someone super sweet and super awesome. This is, yes, Tinkerbell. You guys love seeing her. She's actually my, <coughs> I'm still coughing. Yep, that's it, that's it, that's happening right now. She's actually been in a lot of my live streams lately. Um, a lot of you guys seem to like her, so right now we're kind of doing the hashtag the MJ and Tinkerbell show, or MJ and Tink show, I don't really know, but she's just a perfect little uh, co-star, or whatever you want to call it, co-host, um, to my shows, so I know I should be bringing her on more often. And I know a lot of you guys have been asking to see her quite often and to see the geckos in general and more care tips on them so that's what I'm doing today you can rest assured you can sleep with ease now because MJ's got it covered and before I start don't forget to check out my merchandise we have t-shirts and stickers the link is down below I'll also leave the link somewhere up here and you can check that out on my website right now so today I am just going to cover some very important tips so today I have five important care tips on leopard geckos for you today. So the first tip I have is calcium. Yes, calcium. Calcium is a very, very crucial and important part of your leopard gecko's life. Now, not everyone actually knows this. I remember, I'm kind of getting a Mandela effect here, um, but I remember when I used to look up leopard gecko care and I personally didn't know anything about leopard geckos, there was this thing where they would tell you that a calcium bowl is needed and calcium is to be dusted on the uh, live crickets that you feed them every few feet. Meetings. And it's weird because now that's like not introduced in leopard care videos And it's weird because it was in every single leopard ge le leopard gecko care video and Now it's not which is just weird and the really weird thing about it is that leopard geckos definitely need calcium a lot They need it more than the average lizard sometimes Although I will point out here in this video now that it is very important for most of your lizards to be having uh, Calcium in their diet in some way now I do give it to my Cuban night and Igor my two leopard geckos And I also I don't give it to my crested gecko But that's because my crested gecko has calcium dusted on his cricket every now and then so I don't need to have a bowl in there um, and I do know that the calcium is also provided in his crested gecko pangea mixed diet now it is very important that your leopard gecko gets regular calcium in their diet simply because they will get metabolic bone disease and that is just a disease that is a calcium deficiency that basically makes their little bones go all mushy and you can see the example here uh, poor Tinkerbell used to have an owner way before me <laughs> that uh, over time didn't give her calcium obviously because she suffers from metabolic bone disease and she also has a couple of toes that are missing because of shedding. Shedding is also very important. Uh, somebody obviously did not uh, attend to her when uh, she was shedding so that probably happened but uh, you really don't want to have this. There's just no reason that you can't give your leopard geckos calcium. How do you do it? Simply just put a bowl of calcium at all times in their bowl for them to lick and yes They will lick it on their own I have seen my geckos do it from time to time and it is super cute and You also need to be dusting it on their crickets that you will be feeding them every other feeding and this is my top most prioritized 
uh, tip on caring for leopard geckos because I mean you can just see like you see her little her little feet here um, that happens literally just because the bones start going bad and believe it or not there is bone deficiencies even worse than this I have seen uh, leopard geckos with metabolic bone disease actually worse than uh, Tinkerbell here so there's just no reason for that to be happening at all now my second care tip on leopard geckos is to monitor and know what to do when shedding. Now this is also very important, again I'm using her as a uh, demonstration kind of of what could happen. Again, your leopard gecko could get so many injuries and they could actually, uh, they could actually get um, really 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 bad injuries around the feet if you don't attend to them with shedding. Simply what I do when I know that my leopard gecko is about to shed, it's very simple. They'll start to become dull in color, very, very dull in color. And uh, then from there, you just put a wet paper towel or a wet towel in general in their tank. And this will just have a lot of humidity going around in the tank and it holds moisture really well. Um, from my point of view, uh, I would definitely use just a regular a small towel and just put it in the tank. Now, of course, you want to be misting as well when this is happening, so you can also mist there. And one other option for shedding is I would definitely say that you want to keep a damp paper towel on top of their mesh. Uh, mesh lid on their tank. If you do these simple tips with shedding when the shedding time comes There is just no reason that they should have any problems if they do have any shedding problems Very simple get them out on your own and any of the parts that are not coming off on their own Make sure that they're super super moist super damp and simply rub them off with a paper towel and they will come off on their own um, don't rush it, uh, try not to hurt them, and you know, as always, just make sure it's super wet. You never want to tear off dry shed, and if a shed is refusing to come off, if it's struggling to come off, never just rip it off. That's never something you want to do. That can cause a lot of injury to uh, their skin, so. My third tip on caring for leopard geckos is definitely never using any sand in their enclosure. Now, I know a lot of people tend to like sand. I get it. It looks cute. It looks like a little mini desert, but it's deadly. <laughs> I, I totally, totally get it. It looks really, really cute, and I would totally use it if it didn't do anything to my leopard geckos. But unfortunately, what happens is when you use sand, you definitely can give them impaction and you don't want that. Basically what happens is if you watch a leopard gecko uh, kind of strike at their food, they strike at their food kind of like a snake does. So if you have a snake, that's kind of what it looks like. But when they're hunting down crickets and even eating mealworms, whatever it is that they're eating, they automatically strike at it. Um, I've even fed them gel food, which is just like, it's insect gel food. And I've even seen them strike at that. It's just a totally normal thing for them to do uh, striking when they're hungry and then they're about to eat something so when they do that um, if you have loose bedding that loose bedding is also gonna have bits of it on the food that they're striking at so long story short having sand in your tank is a almost a death sentence if you don't watch it now if you are a subscriber of mine and you use sand for your bearded dragon or your leopard gecko or anything like that um, I'm not judging you, uh, maybe you weren't aware, maybe you didn't know, but the fact is that if you know now, you have some time to change it. So again, I don't judge you if you use sand, but I do kind of uh, enforce it. It is, uh, it's not really my opinion, many people have seen uh, their own leopard geckos and bearded dragons as well die from using sand. So it's just not good if you feel like maybe your leopard gecko or bearded dragon, by the way, <laughs> is impacted. Um, the only thing I would recommend is first off, you could put them in a tub or the bathtub. If you have a bearded dragon, put, make sure it's in very warm water and this will make them poop a lot. So maybe it will help. There's no uh, certain fact on that. At some point, I would probably just take them to the vet if you really think that they're impacted because again, it would be worth taking them to the vet. Leopard geckos live up to 20 years. Bearded dragons live up to about, I would say eight to 10 years. Some say 15, but um, 
Either way, a reptile is definitely worth it since they live a long time. So one trip to the vet so that they don't get impacted, so that they're not going to be impacted anymore is, is totally, totally worth it. I spat at the camera. I don't know if you saw that, but it happened. This is what happens when you speak a lot about something. My fourth care tip on leopard geckos is definitely not using any heat lights. Now I get it that a lot of people want to use heat lights. Um, I'm not, I, I, I kind of get it. Most people want to use heat lights because honestly they want a way to view their leopard gecko. Sometimes they won't uh, outright admit it, but it, a lot of people like to use heat lights just because simply they want to get the heat source in on their leopard gecko and at the same time they want to view them. And I get it, but I have used the heat light. I made the mistakes, okay? I did uh, the personal experience when I started with leopard geckos and the heat light is just not helpful at all. When I had a heat light, um, I found that my leopard gecko was often not as warm as he should have been. Uh, when I had a heat light, I never saw my leopard gecko come out. He would never come out until I took the light away. Mostly because, yes, they are nocturnal. Um, it's just, you can just see that they're nocturnal just by their behavior. Um, no matter what, my leopard geckos are always coming out at night. I never see them out, even late during the day. It's strictly nighttime. Um, the only time I'll ever see them uh, during the day is if they want to come get a drink or maybe if they're hungry, they'll kind of let me know by being around, kind of looking at me like, hey, you gonna give me some food? <laughs> you gonna give me some food, you know? Um, but <laughs> if you see all the spit, I'm sorry. That's not cool. I'm literally spitting at your face. Anyway, um, but yeah, the heat light just doesn't do much for them. They don't come out because the light's always on. Um, and uh, I realized that my leopard geckos will come out a bit more without any light on. Here's the option if you do want a way to view your leopard gecko, but at the same time not have to worry about it being a heat light. Simply go get a low wattage, regular um, UV type bulb. Uh, at Home Depot or Lowe's if you want. You can even get a really low wattage uh, UV for the, um, for the, uh, what do you call it? For the reptiles, just as long as it's not a heat light and it's a regular low wattage type light. So, um, you know, all I would recommend is just getting that so you can have that lamp on top of the tank when you feel like viewing your leopard geckos because I actually did that because I said to myself I can't use any heat light or anything for my leopard gecko but how am I going to view it so I just ended up getting a regular little uh you know low wattage bulb at Lowe's and now I can view my leopard geckos anytime I want I can show them on camera with a good lighting that kind of thing so if that's what you're looking to do you can totally do that but when it comes to heat sources heat mats are the way to go after I see my leopard geckos eat I, I simply see them go straight to where their heat mat is. They literally lay their little belly on it and then they start digesting their food. So they do digest their food because um, by, by laying down on the heat mat, being on top of it. So that is definitely what I would recommend. So no heat lights, please. That would be, be very helpful. So yeah, yeah. And for my fifth tip, I strongly recommend not housing leopard geckos together. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, I house my leopard geckos together. Yeah. Um, but, sorry, they don't sound like that. Um, I was kind of imitating a coworker that I worked with, but he's like, oh yeah, I put my leopard geckos together all the time and stuff like that. And no, you don't keep them together. There's no reason a leopard gecko should have a buddy anyways. They typically don't care. And yes, you will have those instances where oh maybe I put my leopard geckos together and it was fine it was fine their whole life yeah but <laughs> I'm sorry I'm imitating people and they didn't even sound like that but whatever um but there's just no need uh, reptiles don't require companionship um, there might be some instances where some some little um, reptiles can can be together but most of the time, they just don't need companionship, so why bother getting them a buddy? Uh, maybe it's easier to put two in a tank, that kind of thing. Um, they say that most of the time, females can be together, and in some instances, they can. But in my own opinion, 
uh, and personal experience, you should never have a male and female together and there's really just no reason for the girls to be together. Now again, there are some instances, but when I'm giving care tips, I don't tell you, oh yeah, put your leopard geckos together because I would hate to be responsible for um, maybe your two females decided to get rowdy with each other and one ripped off the other's tail, you know? So there's no need on it, um, but you know, sometimes every now and then but definitely no male and male, definitely no male and female unless you're planning on breeding and stuff the right way, and females sometimes. Now those are all my tips, but I do want to just have one little care tip here. Make sure you keep a variety in your geckos diets. Uh, this goes for crested geckos and leopard geckos. You really wanna keep a variety in um, all your reptiles diets, honestly, bearded dragons, whatever. Um, it's very important because they don't have just one thing in the wild. They eat quite a lot of things. So you want to make sure that you don't make that mistake. So I hope these care tips help you guys. I know that a lot of you guys have been wanting to see more gecko videos. And I know that... <laughs> I really know that I needed to step up my game on my geckos. It's been a while, I'm sorry, but I finally got to it and I really hope that this was helpful for you guys. Ugh, help for helpful. So please hit that bell down below. It will notify you guys every time I make a video or a live stream, which I have been making quite a lot of. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been uploading every day. I hope I'm not an annoying the freaking crap out of you. I'm sorry. I talk a lot. Runs in my family. So hit that bell down below. You want to be part of the early notification squad here. It's really, really cool. Also, don't forget to submit your videos to be a part of the Adventures Crew show. If you don't know what that is, I'll have the video up here so you guys can check it out. Again, don't forget to check out my merch down below. All the links are down below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up, especially if you love pets and leopard geckos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!